Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Touch. We're back. I'm Darwin Campbell. The Morning Touch is brought to you by the Chaplain for the Homeless and the FSBC in Glendale. We hope that you are encouraged by what you're about to hear as we're going to continue our series, the part one on Lost is Lost. In part one, we're going to talk about the first way in which one can be lost. But first, the Morning Touch is brought to you by the Chaplaincy for the Homeless and the FSBC in Glendale for your encouragement. I hope you lock it in on Luke chapter 15 because that's where we're going to be. We're going to break it down so that you can understand lost means lost and the ways in which one finds themselves lost in hopes that you will be found if you're not already. Indeed, let's go to Luke chapter 15 and we're going to look at the first reason or the first way that we are lost. We are lost by our own recklessness, first of all. In Luke chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, the Bible says all the tax collectors and sinners were approaching to listen to him. The Pharisees and scribes were complaining. This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told a parable. He says, what man among you who has 100 sheep and loses one of them, does not leave the 90 in the open field and go after the one he finds until he finds it. And when he finds it, he joyfully brings it home on his shoulders. One of the first ways that we many find themselves lost today is they're lost by their own recklessness. They're lost by their own mindlessness. And you say, well, brother, what are you talking about? Well, you know, Jesus used a simple parable. And that simple parable involves having 100 sheep, but one decides to stray. One decides to see greener pastures and venture out. And when he ventures out, he gets so far away that he cannot find his way back. He does not know which direction the herd or the flock is. So there he stands lost. And in the meantime, the shepherd recognizes that he only has 99 when he should have 100. So what does he do? He leaves the 99 standing alone and he goes out into the wilderness to find that one sheep. Well, what we're going to focus on is that one sheep. God says that sheep is important. It's lost. It's not a part of the flock. It's lost its way and it can't find its way back. How many of us are out there right now who are like that one sheep that's wandered off, wandered away so far that you can no longer see the flock, that you are, have been separated from what you once believed or the way that you once were trained in the Lord? One can be lost by recklessness, by mindlessness, by neglect, walking off, thinking that the grass is greener on the other side. One can be lost because when one wanders away from that flock, you lose the strength of the flock. You lose the fellowship of the flock. You are influenced by other things around you and they cause you to fall. And when you fall, you can no longer make your way back or see your way back to the safety of that flock because you wandered off thinking that the grass was greener on the other side. Many people have made that giant mistake, having been raised with good spiritual values, having been raised with good moral principles, but because they looked to the right or they looked to the left and they walked and wandered away from the pasture thinking that it was greener on the other side only to find out when they got over there not only did the grass taste sour and bitter but they found out that when they looked up to go home they could not. Jesus makes it clear that his priority is the lost. One of the most serious kinds of lostness 
is to be out there all alone with no direction and no leadership and no one to lean on and no one to talk to. That is a worse kind of lostness. But what happens with us is when we ourselves dictate and direct that by walking off from the flock, it's a problem. It's a sincere problem. Jesus loves sinners around the fold. He doesn't want you or I to drift away from the flock. Because when you drift away, you drift away in the darkness. You drift away in the loneliness. You drift away because of the pressing affairs going on around you. And you forget about God. You forget about the church. You forget about his people. And before too long, you can't even see or you have no relationship with his people. The Lord calls us to be reminded that lost is lost. And this is a sad situation to be in because there is no excuse and God will not wink at ignorance, Acts 17, 30. For the times of ignorance he winked at, but now he commands all men everywhere to repent. Lost is a terrible tragedy. To be lost and all alone in darkness is horrible. Jesus said his priority is to reach out and to go find the lost. But if you find yourself in this lost and undone condition, having walked away, you need to seek out the Lord. You need to come back to the flock. You need to return to the truth because lost is lost and there is no excuse. L-O-S-T, left out of salvation's talk. When I am lost, I am left out of salvation's talk because I can't find my way through the darkness and I can't save myself. It's time for you to get in touch with the Lord and his message and understand that he died for you. He died so you won't have to be lost. He comes searching for you so you don't have to be lost. He comes for you into the wilderness looking and searching so that you don't have to be lost. It's time for you to understand how much he loves you, loves you, because he doesn't want you to be lost or left out. The Morning Touch is brought to you by the Chaplain for the Homeless and the FSBC in Glendale. We're calling you back to the flock so that you won't have to be lost, wandering in darkness, wandering without hope. We want you to find Jesus, to come back to the flock, to reach out. That's what this series is all about because lost is lost. It's time for you to come home. God bless you and keep you. We'll see you again next time on The Morning Touch.